In this series, you will learn how to bring robots to life from simulation using WeirdLab, an open source framework built on top of Isaac Lab. It's probably one of the most practical series out there, and even if you're not working on mobile robots, it's a must watch for anyone building with Isaac Lab. I'm super excited to be covering a Weird Lab series on this channel, as I've already had the chance to interview Tyler, the main author, and it's great to see the whole team actively supporting the community with this collaboration. I highly recommend watching the whole series and trying it out yourself, as you will really learn a lot, so be sure to check it out. You'll find all the links in the description below. Now let's get started with the introduction from Jason. Hey everyone, I'm Jason, and this is going to be the first of many videos on WieldLab, an open source reinforcement learning simulation suite built on top of NVIDIA's Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab. The idea is to train wheeled robots like Musher, F110, and Hound to do cool things like drifting, visual navigation, or terrain climbing, all in realistic simulated environments. Once the robot gets good in simulation, the goal is then to transfer the skill into the real world. Let me show you how this all works. Now, before we begin, you might be wondering, why do we care about these three tasks? Why do we care about drifting, elevation, and visual navigation? These aren't random. Each one stresses a different part of the robotics and reinforcement learning pipeline. And together, they cover a pretty nice range of problems and demonstrate how RL can be used in a variety of cases. Drifting is all about dynamics and control. Here, the robot has to handle things like tire friction, slip, and high-speed turns. When it's sliding through a turn, the wheels aren't pointing the same direction the robot is actually moving. And so there's tire friction, slip, and just a whole lot of forces pulling it around. The controller has to juggle steering, throttle, and balance all at once. Elevation is all about how the robot connects to what it feels with what it's moving over. It needs to use its internal sensors like the gyro or IMU to understand its own pose and stability. And it needs to do all of this while reacting to things like slope or gravity in the environment. This task is great at testing whether the robot can use proprioception to stay upright, make progress towards a goal, and avoid doing something dumb like driving off an edge. Finally, we have visual navigation. Visual navigation brings in the perception side. Instead of just reading numbers from sensors, the robot gets raw camera data. Now it's responsible for turning pixels into decisions. It needs to figure out is this safe? Is this unsafe? How do we stay on the road? And how do we not drift into the danger zone? And this is super useful, super practical in real world scenarios in things like lane following or off-road detection where we need to rely on vision to make informed decisions. Putting these things together, we have a really great suite of tasks that demonstrate the versatility of reinforcement learning. But before we jump into implementation, let's slow down for a minute and talk about reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is basically trial and error at scale. A simple way to think about this is imagine teaching a dog a trick. The dog experiments, you give treats for the good movements and eventually the dog learns the pattern. RL works in a very similar way, but instead of dogs, we've got robots. Rewards replace treats, and the trick is whatever task we're training it to do, such as drifting. There are a few words that we're gonna use a lot in the code and that you'll see a lot in the code, and so I'm just gonna quickly go over a few of these terms. First, we've got environment. The environment is the robot's entire world. The terrain, the robot model, sensors, rules, this is the environment. And each task has its own environment that is designed to best suit the task. 
Next, we've got observations. Observations are what the robot gets to see or feel. This could be things like camera images, the robot's wheel velocities, IMU readings, etc. Next, we've got actions. Actions are the controls the robot sends back to the simulator. These are things like steering or throttle. Basically, anything that moves the robot is considered an action. Rewards are how we tell the robot what we want. For example, moving towards a goal, that is good. Crashing into a wall, that is not good. Smooth, stable driving, that is good. And so we effectively assign these rewards to teach the robot. The policy is like the brain. After a task like drifting is learned, the robot relies on the policy to keep doing the learned task. For example, we use the policy to run the robot in the real world after running it in simulation. Finally, an episode is just one full run of a task. Hopefully defining these terms makes it easier for you to understand the code in Wheeled Lab, and hopefully it'll make the later explanations in this video clearer. Now let's jump back to Wheeled Lab and talk about assets. All of the robot's definitions live in the Wheeled Lab assets folder. This includes constants for each robot's physical properties, including things like wheelbase, mass, and joint limits, along with the 3D meshes that define how the robot looks and moves. Right now, the terrains are manually set up, but eventually we want them to be auto-generated so we can train across lots of different environments automatically. This is something we're gonna be doing in the open source library. And so we welcome all contributions that can get pushed towards this goal. Finally, we've got the meat of Wheeled Lab, which is training and development. The actual training happens through the Wheeled Lab RL scripts. We use Isaac Lab to run hundreds of simulations at once, usually somewhere between 512 and 1024 environments in parallel. Each environment runs slightly different conditions, so the robot learns to generalize its behavior. Training progress is logged to weights and biases, and once it's done, the result is saved as a .pt model file. Finally, we can deploy this model to real robots using Real Lab, which handles the sim to real transfer. Real Lab has currently been tested with Musher, an open source mobile robot that's great for these types of projects. Now let's move on to the installation procedure. We recommend using Ubuntu 22.04 or higher, but Wheel Lab still works with 20.04. The installation is just a bit more annoying and we'll have a separate video for the installation procedure. So first let's create a fresh Conda environment this will keep everything clean and it effectively ensures that Isaac Lab and PyTorch don't conflict with other projects that might be on the machine. Next, install PyTorch. Now, install Isaac Sim version 4.5.0. Later versions should still work but Wild Lab was developed with 4.5.0, so it's safest to stick with this version. We will clone Isaac Lab. And then let's go to the Isaac Lab directory and install the extensions needed for Isaac Lab using the install argument. Finally, clone Wild Lab. Jump into the Wild Lab source directory and then install Wild Lab, Wild Lab tasks, Wheeled Lab Assets, Wheeled Lab RL using the following commands. To make sure everything works, let's try running one of our sample tasks. We recommend creating a Weights and Biases account so that visualizing is a lot easier. And there we go. We've just successfully ran a training run for drifting. We can visualize what just happened in Weights and Biases 
And in future videos, we'll dive deeper into how we can use the data in weights and biases to get a better understanding of how our training went. So that's Wield Lab in a nutshell. If you're curious about the underlying code or want to learn more about each task, be on the lookout as we release deep dive videos that dive into how each task works specifically. In the meantime, please feel free to explore Wield Lab and submit issues or pull requests if you'd like to contribute. If you have found this video helpful and want to see more, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Also, a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. Your support really means a lot.